Hi, Marley Millie. <laughs> Thank y'all for joining. Hello, Jill. Hey, little boys, lady. Hi, Monster Live. Oh, they're going too fast. Impeccable neck. Hi, Rosie. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining. Today, real quickly, I wanted to talk before I head out about levels of consciousness. Hi, Barbados. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh, I wish I could be there. Wow, that's beautiful. Levels of consciousness is going to be the topic today. I like how you talk. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Levels of conscious. Hi, Live2227. Thanks for joining. So I'm going to get right into it because I don't want this to be a long video. But I don't want nobody to lose their mind with consciousness. And I want to talk about the levels that I've been through. Hi, Kendra. 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 So here we go. We're going to jump right into it because I want to put this on my uh, YouTube channel and I don't want to have a lag in the beginning of the video. So levels of consciousness. You know, beginning in my journey, I started off with consciousness just by changing my diet. I changed my diet and it was like a light bulb went off and I just had more mental clarity than I ever did. You know, like in the past when I would like read a book per se or a paragraph, even then I would have to read the paragraph about two or three times to really understand because I felt like my head was so cloudy. But when I began to change my diet just because I wanted a better quality of life and eat better, one day I remember like it was yesterday I was sitting in an engineering meeting and it was like a light came on and I understood I was re retaining the information I was present I was in that moment and I was like oh wow I'm really getting this you know because I would normally have questions you know as the new girl in that group anyway after that you know my dreams you know you know religion I had already walked away from so I was walking away from religion and so when you walk away from religion to spirituality you you really have to have that mm, that spiritual buoyancy like they talk about in in church like you know the ability to fall about down and bounce back up because you got like the wiles of spirituality you know like in church you know how they have the low down reverend low down in the church well then they in the spiritual realm you know the so-called conscious people they have the little you know conscious people that walk around with the unk you know talking about hey let's build you know let's you know let's build sister yeah i want you to be one of my ladies you know because god is all and you know he want everybody and you know it's okay because you know he the conscious god and you got to move to the traffic over here because you, you're melanin and then you start you start learning about your blackness and your melanin and eo melanin field melanin and the power and you you get through all of this here you learn about the the hebrew israelites and you but you have to have discern, discernment do this here because i with me coming from religion and then going to all these different conscious so-called groups I just kind of like wanted to go in just a little bit, have that spiritual buoyancy so I could get my butt back out of there. Because I didn't want to go to a fall and be in another religion per se. I didn't want to be in no other group, you know, in the Hebrew Israelites per se. I would listen to them for a while. Then they were talking about, oh, okay, it's a new age. And okay, now we're going to rape the white ladies. And I'm like, oh, Lord, we're going to do that again? We're just changing races? I was like, no, you know, because it was on the corner. You know, that was kind of scary to me. No judgment here if you're a Hebrew Israelite. Please don't come for me but I'm just speaking my truth and so I didn't want to do that and then and then you know I begin to study you know the, the Dead Sea Scrolls and, and Thode and the laws of my yard and all these things because I wanted to just get a, the, the substance for my soul and be able to pull out you know and get what I needed for my journey because my journey is unique for me and your journey gonna be unique for you and so and then I started listening to you know the the, the, the um, motivational speakers like the Abraham Hicks of the world the Dwayne uh, Dwyers of the world you know with Dr. York I was like oh he's really really cool him you know just for the message I, I wasn't into his personal business like I said you gotta when you become conscious I don't want you to lose your mind this is the purpose of me doing this here I don't want you to lose your mind baby because the mind is a terrible thing to waste you have to have discernment here and so you get out of religion now and you done went through all of those things there. You, you know all about, you know, your path. Now you know, you, you're starting to understand that your energy, you done change your diet. You're not just saying you a vegan, you really into live foods and you really about electrifying your already electric body, right? And so, <laughs> wow, it's been a journey. 
And so then you may have some type of, of gift of clairvoyancy or whatever. Maybe whatever your gift is, if, if, in, if you go to sleep and you have these dreams and visions or whatever, that's going to start happening a little bit more present for you. And maybe you'll start feeling this little crawly, I call it a crawly sensation on your forehead and stuff, you know, because your, your third eye is cracking open, like, right? And draining in your head. I went through all this here, astro projecting and all this. This is some scary stuff if your mind is being lost in the process, right? And so then you realize, after you go through all of that, you get to a point where, at least I did, you get to a, a point where you studied to show thyself approved. You rightly divided the word of truth that is true for you, not for me. And you sit back there and you're like, I'm God. So now, you, now you're really feeling yourself like, right? Yeah, I'm God. I've been concluded. Okay, I'm God. All of us are children of God. You know, and I got this power. Like, right? So you feeling large and in charge, right? You think you into something. You're still not there yet because there's still more levels. And I'm not at the highest of the, all of the levels. But you realize, okay, I'm God. And I'm feeling myself. And yeah, and I'm, I know how to meditate now. And I got a clean diet now. And I'm happy. Because I chose to be happy. And so you do your little meditation thing. You could center yourself. You done been through, oh, I forgot about the um, the astrology. Oh, you done went through the, st the astrology. You done studied the stars already. You done already did the, the crystals. And Man, I'm telling you, wherever you are in your journey, it's still more. Because it ain't going to ever end is what I'm trying to say here. But here's the part I did this video for. for because you get to a point where you you meditate and you know you God you know you create your own reality through thought but it really gets powerful when you become an intentional creator when you try to go and sort and sift through those thoughts to clear your energy to create your reality what I'm saying is since we're in this realm, we have like we're governed underneath the law of polarity, right? Where all things are two-sided. So not only are all, all things two-sided, we are two-sided with our thoughts. Our thoughts have two sides to them. Just kind of like in the movie Us, how they had the, the double gangers, you know, underground. That's how everything, there's no such thing in the physical reality as one. There's an illusion of separation. So one was separated, so to speak, to have two sides to it. You know, yin yang, black, white. You know, good versus evil, God versus the devil, like that. So, your thoughts are not exempt from that. So now, now you're sitting up there thinking, okay, you got it because you know how to be still and become one mind, body, and soul. You, you know how to sit down and meditate. And you get out the meditation and you know how to get out of the body and, 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 and be present in the car and to feel the seat and stay out of your head. You know how to do that. But when it's time to think though when it's when you're in your head when you're inside of it you have two thoughts you have that thought like say for example if somebody was to ask me if I'm conscious my physical the lower self I would say would say yes I'm conscious but in my subconscious mind there is an answer to that too two sides of that answer and in my subconscious mind you know my higher self if it's saying nah, she ain't there yet <laughs> there's a little you know disagreement going off my energy is not in alignment to me answering yes to that question right so now when I say yes and the answer is really no because the subconscious know that I'm not all the way there there's just since we're energy that that no is vibrating or resonating in my aura so I'm walking around thinking I'm so called woke so to speak but I'm not so in order to get to that level of being woke per se, I, because all is mental, I have to clear that thought. I have to consciously get there in order to have my, my subconscious mind saying yes and me saying yes at my lower self. So that way my energy or my frequency will be resonating at fully awareness, fully conscious, fully love frequency, right? But here's the thing. <laughs> You have two sides of that one thought from that one question. But you also have inside of that every other thought. 
that you're trying to be a deliberate creator. So it's thought by thought by thought by thought. And we have so many thoughts in one day, not to mention so many thoughts in like lifetime after lifetime after lifetime since we've been asleep. So you get to a point in your journey of awakening <laughs> where there's another level where you could really go crazy in your head trying to sort out thoughts and make thoughts more easier, slow down the momentum of them so that they won't be messing with your aura. And what I mean is to slow down the momentum of that thought in my subconscious mind that I said, no, I'm not conscious. Well, I could slow that thought down by simply saying, well, I'm on a journey and I never get it wrong. And I'm doing the best that I can. I know that I am more on the love frequency that I used to be. You know, kind of like buffering down the thought so it wouldn't resonate so powerfully and be so negative in your aura or your energy space. And so that you can deal with it and so that one day that you could finally meet up with that thought and become balanced with your frequency or your energy. <laughs> I hope I'm not losing y'all. I want y'all to get that. I want you to get this here because when you become conscious and you're a deliberate creator and you are trying to create your ma um, reality, your manifestation power, your aura is, ex is affected by those thoughts. And you could think nothing of it. You could you could see somebody walking like down the street or whatever that you grew up with, and you could be saying, you know, in your in your mind, oh Lord, here you come. <laughs> what what do you want? You know? And so you give it off an aura at that present moment, like you don't want to be bothered. That's what your aura is saying. Cause because cause, cause the physical, you could lie with the physical and be like, oh hey, what's up when they come down here? But your aura don't lie, energy don't lie. And so now you got this, I don't want to be bothered right now with this dude energy in your aura. And so, but at the same time, earlier today, you was up in the room man, trying to manifest, trying to create, uh, to get, what, $200 so you can give your mama $200 for Mother's Day or something. But your aura now is at a low frequency. And so, <laughs> so when you get here and you understand this here, it'll kind of make you feel kind of like wanting to fight with these thoughts initially and it seems like it's another awakening because now it seems like all hell that broke loose because now all these thoughts are just coming at you just coming at you you'd already been through the astral projection you'd already seen all kind of entities and had the dreams and you're like dang this is something else now now I gotta, I gotta be a deliberate creator. I gotta, I gotta make sure that I'm on a certain frequency. I gotta make sure my aura clear all the time. And it's okay. I'm not saying that you know, not having a high frequency is a bad thing. It's okay if you fall down, just like they say in church. You a just man fall, but he, you know, he can get back up again. Just go on and get back up again. But it gets you to a moment like in the movie, in the movie Matrix, when the man wanted to just go back into the Matrix. It's, it just gets you sometimes if you're not strong-minded to the point where, you know what? Bring me back into the Matrix. I won't taste uh, the steak again. I know this Matrix is not real, but just bring me back. Because it become, it becomes so much because this is a mental game we're playing. And so, so we have people playing this game. <laughs> putting on faces, trying to be disguised and act as if they really, really woke when they just, all, all they bought was a hammer, this crystal, you know, all they, oh, they never been through the work just yet, and I'm not, that's not judgment there, I'm just letting you know if you at that place, baby, there's so many levels to consciousness, and be sure you're prepared for the next level, and the next level, and the next level, and don't you lose your mind. When you come out of that religion, you have to be strong-willed when you come out of that religion. So nobody would soup you up. <laughs> oh my gosh. I had a guru, he's passed now, and he helped me so much in the beginning of my journey. And I am so, I feel so thankful for him. He is with me energetically right now, today. He's helped me make my product. He is, he lives with me because energy does not die. It simply transforms. So he is part of my collective, part of my ancestral realm. But he wasn't there when I went through that stage of being an intentional creator. He used to tell me, I used to, I, I didn't get it. Because like, <laughs> when you wake up to one level, you just wake up to get to that level. And it's almost like you graduate from that level and then here go another. 
And he'll go another ascension and another. But when he was trying to teach me these things, I wasn't ready. My mind wasn't open. But now, everything that he told me, I can see clearly now. Everything that he told me. And he warned, forewarned me about it. So when I got to this place, I promise you all, I have been through some things. And I am i don't like even saying I'm a strong black woman because I feel as though it's masculine energy, but I know that I am strong-minded and strong-willed. But those thoughts are powerful, and it is a gang of them. And I just want you all to be aware of when you get to that place so you don't lose your mind, and that you have the right type of support system <laughs> in any place you are. Astral projected was, was scary. Having those dreams, having having entities <laughs> looking at you with no eyeballs in these sockets was scary. Having hearing voices in the middle of the night, opening up the third eye, all of it is a scary experience. But you have to be strong and say, hello, fear. <laughs> I'm not going to stop. Even when you get through a meditation phase. Because what, what's going on is that, that old program that you had downloaded from religion, from the boogeyman, from the monsters, from whatever you have in your closet, it has to come to surface and you have to deal with that thing. It, it don't matter, it don't matter when you deal with it, whether it's during the meditation, during the astral projection, during um, when you're trying to be an intentional creator, it don't matter, but it's gonna come for you to deal with and you have to be ready because you created that monster. You put that monster in the closet <laughs> and you call yourself tucking it away but what happened to you is that it got bigger it got larger you know it got larger to the point where it'll it'll scare you it'll have you underneath the bridge you know a lot of those people that's underneath the bridge i don't know if y'all have homeless people underneath the bridge where y'all have but we have some a lot of those people <laughs> are conscious people they're the real conscious people them a lot of those people not crazy no they didn't got into a realm and now everybody in the physical reality, they still dumb down in their little box, in their little religion. But those, some of those people are multi-dimensional beings over there. Stuck in different realms are able to enter and exit any realm by free will. Because they, they, they mental is there. But we, we see them and they sitting underneath the bridge talking to themselves and like, yeah, this is my living room. We look at them and laugh like, oh, they, he gone. No. <laughs> gone is a good thing. Gone is where everything really is. Gone is the universe. Gone is different dimensions. We are multi-dimensional beings. But the purpose of this video is to tell you, encourage you, don't lose your mind, baby. And if you feel like you are about to lose that mind, you take it easy. You be easy with yourself. This is a journey you're going to have to go through by yourself. Cause ain't nobody gonna be there in your dreams with you anyway. Ain't nobody gonna be there when you ask to travel anyway. Not in your mind, they're not. They're not, they're not gonna be there when your third eye opened up. They're not gonna be there and experience the vision like you saw the vision or whatever you experienced on your awakening. They're not gonna be there. But remember, you're not the body. We're all mental. And you, to, to bring peace to you, bring the happy thought. Choose that happy thought, because that's what really consciousness is all about. Is a, is a, is the the idea coming to the notion that we have choices and we can choose. Then we can choose not to choose. So at any point in your journey of awakening that you choose not to choose, or you choose to just come on back into this matrix, baby, be easy with yourself. But don't you lose your mind up in there. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. It really, really is. It'll make you feel. <laughs> like the nothingness really that you are really when you have all of these gang of thoughts coming in at one time and you in the beginning stage like for me I didn't know what the heck was going on with me I didn't know how to control it I didn't know how to slow down the momentum I thought I was crazy I used to cry I never forget <laughs> I never forget my mama came over to my house one day and she opened up and I was whispering and I was on my knees. <laughs> I was on my knees by the front door. And she was like, what is wrong with you? And I said, I was trying to talk low. I was like, there are these people. And they will stop talking to me. <laughs> it reminded me of that movie. 
you the six cent with the six cents with the little boy like I see dead people. And I was trying to keep my cool, but I was scared. Oh, I was scared. I'm not gonna lie to you here. So I just wanna encourage you to be fearless. But if you're too scared, baby, come on back. Think that happy thought and bring peace. And I'm not into drinking, smoking, or whatever you do. I never drunk. Well, I used to sip before I became a vegan. But I don't drink anymore. And that's been about eight years. And um, I don't eat any toxic food, baby. But if you got to get you some ice cream or drink you a sip of some liquor or whatever you got to do to get your mind back, you do what you got to do to get your mind to bring you to give you a chill to to give I guess marijuana to give you a high or a low high it work for you babe you do what you gotta do but don't you lose that mind though don't lose your mind they have a lot of people that's stuck in two different realms at one time on a conscious journey have you a support system know all is well with you I wanted to share that with you because I just went through <laughs> <laughs> another level another level but I'm I'm still standing and all is well and I feel amazing I want to go through this here these comments let's see let's see I like the way you talk that's why I left off just hearing, hearing trumpets yeah yeah because of those antennas you know we have ears and we do not hear at certain points you know so those those antennas everything is starting to work and start to heighten I too, girl. That's real. Spirituality. Yeah, you're a blessing. I'm thankful for my discernment. Discernment is so important. Discernment is so important because you you would get. It's not that you ever really get off course, but you could kind of get te you know te uh, lost for a second, just a momentary. I guess I don't want to say lost. Pause for a second, but even the pause is purposeful now, because nothing just happens. But you'll be on your way. You think because like when I was. You know just being spiritual i just thought consciousness was just la 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 i'm black you know i'm eating right power to the people you know i don't believe in hell no more and i just thought that that was it i never knew about no levels i wasn't trying to look for no consciousness i wasn't looking for spirituality it found me my calling found me and so you know when you bump into this thing on your journey Let's see. It's a marathon. It is so true. Yeah, it really is. It takes time. Yeah. Yeah, by acknowledging it. Okay. It helps you create. Yeah. Hey, goddess. Uh, Chrome goddess. Came to show you some love. I appreciate you. I really do. Good evening. You've been starting to get How do we begin? I would say by opening up your heart. The heart chakra is the most important place. That's what my guru started off with me with. Because believe it or not, <laughs> the heart is the most powerful chakra because of its electromagnetic form of energy and it could unclog all other chakras. And for me, when I first started, I was an introverted person. And so in the physical, being that I was introverted, spiritually, I was not speaking my truth, right? But in the physical, me being introverted that meant i had thyroid issues and so my guru was assisting me in opening up my heart and speaking my truth because from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks right and so it unclogged my thyroid issues just by opening up my heart so if you have any other chakras of energy that aren't open open up your heart chakra and it'll release it that is the most important one so that's where you be begin to just start looking for love inside of you I'm not talking about looking for love in a relationship. Finding love for self and then also finding love in the universe itself because you are the universe. You know, you are connected to everything that you see, your reflection of everything. So that's how I would say start off. And then, you know, try to incorporate some live foods to, you know, give you that electric spark for your electric body, for your energy force. Those, the heart first, but then the food. Because see, with me, starting with the food, I was showing myself, I was loving on myself by eating those things, you know, by changing my diet, you know, and I was obtaining more energy. So I, I feel like that is the perfect uh, start. It's not all, really about all of the books and information because like I said, it's your journey. It's cool to read the books to get knowledge, 
but you want to have your own experience and then along the journey you get to a point where you want to stop even reading the books because they it's those people experiences you know and the in the books might have you pause and on one level for a little while too so because it's not your experience you are the creator you have to create your own reality those people that wrote those books already created theirs they're just trying to tell you theirs <laughs> yeah can spiritual work awakening affect the physical body oh yeah yeah it can give you symptoms it can give you a lot of symptoms like i was talking about the little crawly feeling on your forehead it feels like sometimes like when you're releasing this energy, you know, um, it feels like you're standing underneath a shower head. And it's like draining sens sensations on your head, like when you're awakening, when you're, you're um, de getting de decalcified of your pineal gland. You know, uh, physicals, you could have aches. You could have had a mood issues too. You know, you could feel, you can feel like so much of other people energies is, is affecting you you know you could have the munchies some people start to lose weight and gain weight you know yeah you have you have physical issues with you your skin some people even get scaly my guru got scaly skin i never forget when he started and i started um at that time it's like a snake per se skin, shedding of dead skin so you would get like dry skin like you know you get physical symptoms but everybody different though so that's gonna be your experience <laughs> it's only for the chosen everyone doesn't experience that you're right about that Ben you are so right about that beliefs energies knowledge wisdom overstanding thanks for sharing okay good I just wanted to get through them comments and by the way I enjoy my Mother's Day weekend but this video was from my heart to yours don't lose your mind a mind is a terrible thing to waste all this mental but enjoy your conscious journey. We never get it wrong, baby. Be blessed. Be loved. Goodbye.